That mower moved them successfully off to the side with vigor. <laughs> Turn it off. How'd I do? Um. <laughs> you know, I don't really care. <laughs> you might want to think twice before inviting a Mythbuster to mow your lawn. I'm just saying. Look, we have had fun so far, but it is important to remember that this entire story is about the interaction between a spinning lawnmower blade and a rock. How fast does it leave and with how much energy? Now, were those rocks leaving the lawnmower at the speed of a bullet or with the same amount of energy? That we don't yet know. I think what we've got to do is take some of this equipment back into the shop, remove even more variables, and hone in to find out if they really are kicking those rocks with the energy of a 357. The mower mayhem is set to continue. Everybody okay? But coming up next, Three. the accidental ammo Armageddon. Two, one. It's dangerous new heights. expect that level of carnage from our lawnmower. Yeah, we might be onto something with that. True, but a lot is going to rest on exactly how fast those rocks are actually going. But before we get to that, what say we crank up the gore on another story? You're talking about glass guillotine. Yes, the myth is that if a pane of glass falls out of an office building and you're unlucky enough for it to find you on the street, it will shing, cleave you right in twain. Well, I don't know about that, but whatever happens, it ain't going to be pretty. No. For us to do our glass guillotine experiment, we need something to cut. Something that ideally would be like a human. And, well, I asked for some volunteers from the shop crew, but uh, nobody stepped up. So I'm going to have to make my own. And to do that, I'm going to melt down a clear flesh-like material and pour it into this human-sized torso mold. Yep, for anatomical accuracy. <laughs> Jamie's using a creepy mix of realistic materials. See the way that tears? This is a, uh, a polyethylene material, and it actually rips, just like flesh will rip. So I'm going to use this as a filler material so that when our uh, plastic dummy gets impacted, it actually cleaves, if it's going to, like flesh. Getting a human-like texture for their torso is critical. There we go. Adding bags of blood, not so much. These bags are made for what's known as sous vide. It's a method of cooking, and it means that the plastic's able to withstand a fair amount of heat, and this will provide a container for the blood, which when we float this or hang it inside our mold, hopefully, if it gets hit with our glass guillotine, it'll bleed. With the gratuitously gory innards placed, the pouring of the now superheated gel commences. Lower down. It's funny to go back through our whole entire history of human Perfect. analog production. Oh, there, there we go. go. I mean, we started off so primitively, just filling molds like this with dessert gelatin. All the way up to, you know, last year we made a human analog that would actually get hypothermia while you watch. It's all looking good. It's nice and clear. In this case, for our glass guillotine, this one bleeds. And in 12 hours when it cools, we're going to try it out. It's a beautiful start. Oh, it's beautiful. But their bubble is soon burst. That right there, that's a breach of one of our blood bags inside our human analog here. Doesn't look like they've all breached, but if one has... Well, there's only one of two reasons, either because the bag was improperly constructed or because they're all going to breach. What this means to the final product, I have no idea. We just got to wait till this cools and see what we get. This is how Jamie was born. 